Assassin's Creed Valhalla is here and it is truly massive. And there is a lot to do. There are a lot of things that the game doesn't tell you that you kind of have to figure out on your own. Well, you're not going to figure it out alone. I'm Darkshot of the YouTube Assassin, and here are 10 things in no particular order of importance that are kind of important in order for you to get through this game. Let's get our Assassin's Creed Valhalla on. And at number 10 is exploration. I usually don't say things like this, but you know what? I'm going to say it here. Exploration is key in this game. It's very important. There are a bunch of markers that you have no idea what they mean. And the only actual way to really uncover that is to actually go to each of those little areas and figure out what they are. Usually the yellow items are wealth or armor, weapons, things like that, really rare things. And then you have these blue things, which are sometimes mysteries and even artifacts in white. There are tons of things and the map is huge. This right here is just a part of England. And this is not even the Norway. That is where you start the game. So there is a lot to explore, a lot to look into, and a lot to find. So exploration, especially if you want to get a ton of XP really quick, explore everything. Look everywhere. There are secrets and all kinds of just weapons and things strewn all about the countryside. Definitely, definitely go and explore take your time do not rush through the game you're gonna miss something you definitely have to enjoy it you have to experience it the map is according to you huge so once again you want to get this going get to it get exploring in at number nine is the odin sense Odin Sense doesn't just show you where things are and where enemies are. If you get close enough to certain things, it'll also show you what certain things on the map are, which is pretty incredible and pretty useful. Some things you get close to, like those little yellow orbs that are all around, and you're not going to know what they're for. But once you use your Odin Sense, you'll be able to figure out exactly what they are. As you get closer to objectives, you just use the Odin sense and you'll see things pop up on the map, just like you saw on the bar above. Out of nowhere, even though the thing was yellow, I hit the Odin sense and not only did it show me what creatures and things were around, it also shows that there are certain things located in certain areas. There's a key over there, which I'm pretty sure means that there's a treasure box that needs opening that's going to need that key and you're definitely going to want to see that on the map it doesn't really show you those things but once you get close you'll see that certain treasures and whatnot start appearing so definitely use your Odin, your odin sense often and make sure that you always track with it it again does not just show you enemies it shows you where really important things are and that is how you win this game. That is how you advance very quickly. At number eight, we have flighting. Now, flighting looks like a rap battle, and it pretty much is. What you're doing is you guys are going back and forth, insulting each other in rhyme. And when you're done with it, not only will you win silver, but you'll also gain a couple of points to your charisma. Charisma is important because it helps when you're making certain decisions as far as speech. You'll have a whole new kind of thing unlocked. So if you have either a gruff or an angry or a happy kind of thing, there may be other things added as well on that wheel. You may have common sense. You may have 
something where you actually have apathy towards whoever you're talking to things of that nature also I don't know if it'll do that but in most RPG games it will kind of get you lower prices with certain vendors so we'll see if that's what happens here if it does it would be absolutely fantastic I'll let you know in further videos and at number seven you can find tomes of knowledge all around uh, all of this area when you collect this book of knowledge you will learn a new ability and it'll be different every time once you learn your new ability you could do exactly like you did with Odyssey where you could take a look at it you see what it is and then you could actually assign it to one of four slots on either side you have melee abilities and ranged abilities ranged is obviously going to be for the bows and melee is obviously for anything with weapons so you definitely want to keep an eye out for any tomes that you may come across because once you learn that ability you can gain it the other way of learning the abilities is the skill tree and we'll get into that later at number six we have runes the runes are what they use in place of engravings from odyssey and unlike odyssey these can be stacked you can actually use these runes depending on what piece of armor or even weaponry that you've got as long as you've got the slots you can use any of the runes and add them to any piece that you have and stack them so you will see that you've got an entirely new ball game when it comes to actually having like all these resistances and everything like that it's actually pretty wild and the more runes you find the better your chances of increasing all this stuff so definitely make sure that you go around again explore and find as many runes as possible because in finding them that is how you're going to increase your strength look at all these things I don't even have slots for all of them. It's just like Final Fantasy Materia. It's absolutely incredible. At number five, you don't have to worry about leaving this all behind. This is Norway, and you probably will have beaten this in the first couple of hours of the game, but you won't have the strength to go and attack these areas that say power 280. So what are you going to do you're not going to wait around here and just kill every little thing until you're level 280 or anything like that or your power is 280 what you're going to do is you're going to hit this little button over here that shows the atlas and you're going to go back and forth between the two areas you can do that without missing a beat and you just end up back where you were and again you don't have to worry about it you can always come back here if you want to explore later on if you're bored or if you're rushing through the game and you want to come back see there's a couple of things that I left behind and I can come get them at any point that I want and just travel back and forth between the realms and at number four is upgrading your gear now you can upgrade your gear on the fly without a problem as long as you have the materials as long as you have the iron and the leather you can upgrade certain things once they get to a certain level they're gonna need some special attention they're gonna need some special care now in some cases you will find weapons that you can upgrade all the way to mythical which is legendary that's the highest tier possible so you definitely want to make sure that you've got a bunch of materials you can't do that yourself in order to actually upgrade it to mythical you actually have to go over to one of the blacksmiths go to a blacksmith bring him the right materials you have carbon ingot you have nickel ingot you've got tungsten ingot and you've got a bunch of other things that you can add to any of these things you'll see it'll be fine it'll go to superior from superior 
it goes to flawless and then from flawless it'll finally hit mythical if it is able to do that so definitely you want to like look around you want to make sure that you're constantly obtaining all kinds of carbon ingots look for those treasure chests again explore everything look everywhere eventually you'll find these things and then you'll be able to upgrade it on the fly with no issues once you have enough materials we'll upgrade it making it stronger and then you just have to find the materials like leather and the iron in order to do that on the fly as far as upgrading it any further again once you upgrade it you just got to look for more materials now in order to upgrade this to flawless i need to find some nickel ingots so off i go and then number three is the dual wielding option you actually have the ability to put weapons in both hands and dual wield not just switch them back and forth you of course also have the option to just change it and put a sword and shield on or something to that effect and then the other thing that's pretty crazy you could actually dual wield two shields which will just make for some kind of crazy insane sort of maneuvers and and battle play and whatnot so you definitely want to check that out you also want to keep in mind though that you do have weapons that can only be used with both hands such as the spear such as like the giant war hammers things like that and you can equip them in your off hand which is this slot right here you have to equip them in your main hand otherwise it won't take And at number two is the skill tree. The skill tree is pretty freaking complex. And at the same time, not really. What you got to understand is that this is your center. This way is for a warrior. This way is for assassin. And this way is for hunter. So basically, it breaks off into three different slots. The thing is, you have to obtain different levels whenever your that diamond in the upper right hand corner fills up completely with blue you will basically level up you gain a power and you gain two skill points you could use those skill points to add to any of these things and when you reach these sort of things you actually get kind of like a passive sort of uh ability it's not an ability that you actually have to put directly into your slots or anything like that it just automatically happens like during battle the other thing that you got to understand is that when you first start this off you'll only see these three things here and then only by adding different ability points and moving to certain areas will you expand your skill tree and go with other things now you know me you know how i want all those ability points and how crazy i am about it I absolutely plan on getting all the ability points. I'm working on all kinds of glitches, XP, money, because both of those are very necessary in here. And I don't feel like money in order to get those things. I will figure this out and I'll do another video in which I show you exactly which abilities are which and which ones you really want to get. I plan on filling this whole thing up. You heard it here first. And finally, we have the store and saves. For some reason, we have an own tab and it shows everything that you have that you've collected, that you've gotten from Ubisoft Connect or the store itself. The thing is that when you use your saves, it automatically follows with you. All this stuff will drop if you started a brand new game. It would drop immediately after you talk to the king in Norway in the first legs of the game all of a sudden everything that you have owned will drop the weird thing is that anytime you start a new game it will overwrite your old saves and if you bring your account information to another person and you let them use it so that they could download your games 
which is something that I do with my son. If I download a game and it's something that he wants to play, he has my account information on his PS4 so that that way he could download the same game to his PS4 and play it. But in the case of Assassin's Creed Valhalla, if he does that, all my information downloads from the cloud directly to his system which is the only reason that this own tab would work it'll automatically drop all that stuff into his thing even if he's playing on his file it still has my game and my file for my game so you got to be real leery of that even if he goes and he buys a brand new disc and uses that rather than my file or rather than downloading the game because he has my account information it's still gonna play my game which is really wild now the reason they did this is so that when you get the PS5 as opposed to PS4 if you start it on the PS4 automatically the data downloads if I have all my things connected to Ubisoft Connect, which I do, I have my Xbox One, my Xbox 360, my PS3, 4, 5, the Series S, uh, my, my Nintendo Switch, and my PC, all connected to Ubisoft Connect. That means that if I bought this game for Xbox One or the Series S, it would immediately download that information directly to those systems. So I can't even start over on those systems. I immediately start over wherever I left off. Really weird, they should have a function so that you could turn that off or you could choose to download it. But for now, that's what it is and it's really, really odd. <laughs> So anyway, those are my 10 tips for starting off with Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Now, I'm getting further into the game and I'm going to be doing more tip videos so that you know what to expect and what to look for as you get further and further in this game. Right now, I'm in England and I'm building my little... Uh, my area my my town and i've got a lot of things going on there's a certain order that you should build it in and there's also specific things that you want to make sure you get with those buildings so stick around to this channel make sure you like subscribe and again keep it locked down here so that that way you never miss a beat and you are on top of everything to do with valhalla including any glitches that i find which we're working on a couple. We've already seen some. And we've seen like a lot of just crazy mess ups in the game. And I'll do videos on that as well. Other than that, I really do hope you enjoyed the video. Please like and subscribe. It helps the channel out an awful lot. As always, I want to thank each and every one of you for watching. And until the next one, take care.